I was asked to address this. I can do the first two bits quite easily. The third bit I found rather tricky. And having listened to Matt, I'm now terrified. <laughs> I, I don't know where that place is, but frankly, I'm not sure I want to go there. <laughs> the world of corporate responsibility. Right? Anyway, look, I'll do the first two bits. The third bit, um, I'd say view. See, it strikes me that life is really rather simple. What is it that motivates us? What does it make us get out of bed? What, what do we enjoy? How do we choose to spend our money? It's really quite basic human values and cultural values. And when it comes to landscape, and I agree with you, protected landscape is completely the wrong term. I've started to use special landscape in here, but I'm worried about that now. <laughs> because, uh, I fear we're in special measures too. <laughs> Um, but the fact is uh, that the British has a long pedigree of, of enjoying this stuff. It's not new, but just the latest people to make something of it. This stuff gets us going, doesn't it? This is why we do it. Special landscapes, people doing things. Nothing better than enjoying somebody else working and creating something they do. <laughs> this, I, this, is, this is one of the best, this is all Chilton, but I, this is one of the best bits. This is a bridge that Brunel built. One of his first bridges. Didn't know if it would stand up or not, so it had scaffolding for 60 years. <laughs> Just remember that when people talk about Brunel. But you can stand and stare at it forever. It's a work of art. And he wanted it to be a work of art. He didn't shove up any old bridge. He wanted it to be a work because it fitted the setting. It was spiritual. It wasn't about the balance sheet. It wasn't about profit and loss. It wasn't about the income. Inevitably, all these railways went bankrupt, so maybe that says something. <laughs> the point is that they're still there, and that railway bridge is still there, and we still admire it. And I think it's, that, it's, that, it's elemental as that. And we do this, we mess around in boats, we get close to nature, we get joy out of being in these places, not necessarily spending any money, we are recreating, aren't we? We're recreating our soul and our spirits, and it's just a pleasure. And we need to do more of it, uh, to detox ourselves from all this stuff about... Um, world changes and um, branding that uh, international businesses demand of us. I, I think we need to take it back to the building blocks like that, just to sit there and stare at a view at a special moment, a special time, and you think, wow, fabulous. I want more people to enjoy this. I want more opportunities to do this. So I keep turning around to the slides because I can't see that. So uh, the journey, how did we get here? Hobhouse and Dow, we, we've referred to, I think Matt or David did. Uh, thank goodness for them. They set us off on a journey. I'm not sure it was entirely in the right direction, and I'm going to come back to that. I think we're now a little bit off beam. But nonetheless, it was a turning point. It, it articulated all these spiritual things and something we could do and make a better world. And it distinguished between A and B's and national parks. Uh, and they came up with their criteria, their rationale for doing that at the time, and they're set. Their A list and their B list, in fact, there were three lists. Uh, and that's the curse, I think. So, Long March, Gower, Matt was there, we've all been there, jolly, wonderful place. Um, and it, it, it started the ball rolling, didn't it? Things have come on from it. And I have to say, we, we owe an enormous debt of thanks to the Countryside Commission. For all the government bodies I've ever worked with, it stood out as being the most far seeing, the the most able to take everyone with it and enthuse us and how we miss it. And there are still, I think, some people in the audience, Ray, who, who, you know, and others who, John, wherever he is, um, who come from that stable. Um, and I dearly wish that Natural England and others could somehow embody all the qualities it, it, it had, which I think we have lost. So, Smart Anderson Report, and that came from the Council <coughs> Commission, and m many of us remember um, Gerald Smart coming to these conferences, and you felt there were people, there were seeing us through, that was the guiding hand through this long process, this journey into the unknown. And I, I think we, we need more people like that. And here are some of the names, they used to be regular. The first conference I ever went to, and Matt was still at the Gower, it's actually by the Gower Society called us together in Swansea. And Sir John and Michael Dower turned up and stayed all the way through. Fantastic. Have their counterparts done that since? Have they held? They're strangers to us, and that is a problem. So where are their successors? Actually, I think in Chris Baines, we saw somebody, it's the first time I've heard him speak, and I was very taken by him. We need to get him back, we need to work with him. But he's one of very few. So we've been getting organized and all, all that stuff. Um, and you, some of you have been answering the uh, questionnaires I've been sending around about exactly what you have been doing over these last 20, 30 years to, to get us to this stage. And we've got organized nationally, here we are. Fantastic. 
and all these conferences. You'd be wondering why were there two conferences in 95, 96, both in Swansea? We too wondered why do I have to go to Swansea twice in two years? <laughs> and spent 40 years trying not to go to places like Swansea. It's not as bad as you think. Uh, that depends on how bad you think it is. <laughs> uh, it was interesting. Uh, the the Gower Society and whoever ran the Gower, Gower A and B didn't get on, so they um, organised two successive conferences. But nonetheless, it actually gave us momentum and were well attended. This is just a rundown. I, sadly, I've been to all these conferences. <laughs> all of them. Quite fun. But it really must be a joint conference of next national parks. I'm asking you, Mr. Butterworth. <laughs> we want a joint national park. You said you wanted us to ask you, but I'm asking you. I went... I went I ask, it was a statement. It, it, was, it was almost a threat, wasn't it? <laughs> the, uh, I suspect some of the national parks think of them as threats. I, I went to the National Park Conference for the first time in Yorkshire last year, they are identical to these conferences. The format, the audience, the discussion was the same, the topics and the challenges were the same, the, the solutions are the same. Why on earth they're separate, heaven knows. Uh, except they got to Owen Patterson, who was staggeringly inept. I could really, 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 it, it was depressing hearing that was the session of state. Um, I'm, I'm sure Lord, Lord de Morley is going to be better because he couldn't be worse. <laughs> anyway, so here we are. Um, Croak, I think that was, that was two was a big turning point. It's, it's 15 years ago since all that was drafted. Yeah, we need to move on from that. It was a springboard at the time. It's worked out after a fashion. Some, things better, some parts better than others, but not all of it. Um, Things have come from it, and I'm, I'm rather sorry, you would expect me to say this, that there are only two conservation boards. I think there should have been more. I think actually, the Chil in the Chilterns of Cotswolds, we're, we're standing in a, on a better, firmer territory at the moment than a lot of you who are vulnerable to your changes coming via the local authorities. We've, to a certain degree, <coughs> degree insulated ourselves from that. So, this is the purpose for asking you all those questions. I thought you'd be interested in the answers. Uh, we are here to stay. We've, we've found our feet. You know, it's just a first step in a long journey, but nonetheless, I think those are quite impressive figures. That's a lot of embodied experience, a lot of wisdom, a lot of hard lessons learned. Um, and it's now part of the culture, it's part of the fabric. We can pass that on. And we've done it on a huge string. I, I, I think it's, uh, listening to Matt, it's a big world out there, we have to take part in it. But, but I think it'd be hardly anyone in this room has not been on international exchanges with international partners at one level and down the other level talking to Mrs Miggins about why uh, they want something to happen in, on her field. Yeah, we work at all those levels and I think that is fantastic for such a small outfit. And you do that every day. There's nothing remarkable about it now, it's something we take as granted. And there they are, you work with a lot. Perhaps we don't work enough with businesses. I've been around that lot many times. It's hard work, as, as David was saying, trying, as you all know, trying to get money out of business that, that gives you a net benefit. Jolly hard work, and I, I sometimes wonder if it's really worth it. And we sometimes get distracted, I think, by the money, rather than what we're trying to achieve. There are lots of ways of skinning a cat. And how I'd like to try, by the way. <laughs> Not the cat. Anyway, um, there we are, um, 60 years, where next? And, and this is where I start to struggle. Where does this go next? Well, uh, I think that's the good news. Uh, it is part of the psyche, it's part of the international psyche. You have these special places, let's call them, let's call them outstanding places, shall we? <laughs> so we get rid of, the, you know, parks are neither now, now parks are national, and, uh, you know, this kind of new phrase that suits us all. And I'm going to put the bottom one in there. We are cheap, let's face it, by the God. Do you know, I've come, as you know, embedded in this wretched railway business, and when you, you talk day in, day out about 50 billion, 60 billion, it puts all this into perspective. You know, this, these guys are spending more on consultants in a week than we will spend in a decade. It's got to that level. It's bonkers. <coughs> it's bonkers. In fact, I did work it out. I'm sorry the Minister's not here to hear this. What we're going to spend on HS2 over the next 20 years would keep us all going for 10,000 years. <laughs> Since the dawn of civilization, we could be doing this. Or we could get to Birmingham 20 minutes more quickly. <laughs> repeat that later. It, it, <laughs> you know, these are hard times. I know they're hard times and budgets are shrinking, but the fact is we are a fabulously wealthy country and if we really want to do something, we can. 
Nobody asked for that railway. There's a crap business case. I think you said that, David, on the first day. That you, your business case is capped and nothing. And still it happened because some politicians thought it was a good idea and ran with it. Well, we've got to get into the same vogue. So, the context. We need all this stuff. Difficult times, challenges, nothing new really. You, you take the 20, 30, 40 year horizon, been here before, life goes on. So, big qu that's, that's the question. Why do we spend so little? It, it is pocket money. Absolute pocket money. And yet, as a nation, we value these things. I think all these special landscapes, is it 25% of the country? It matters to everybody. It's part of what is the British identity, is our countryside and our rural heritage and all that goes with it. And yet we spend tuppence on it. So, I'm going to... I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, this is not a dig at David, but I, I, did, I detected a degree of defensiveness there. <laughs> now I'm going to go back to that. Um, a and B's and national parks are just as deserving. Um, they're just as special. And we should be allocating resources accordingly. These are just as good as any national park. You've seen lots of these stunning places. I mean, a lot of the national parks have quite nice landscape too. I've seen it. <laughs> but, but I have to say, um, I, I've been to some national parks where I, I, some of you know one of my favourite acronyms is Mamba, Mamba country. Miles and miles of bugger all. <laughs> We have some of the dreariest national parks I've ever been to in the world as well. Uh, and I'm going to come back to that. Uh, we don't necessarily have the right list. Anyway, there we are. We're not Cinderella's. And it, it seems to me that whilst there is an A list and a B list, and a, a them and another, and a national parks and then B, we're always second class citizens. Doesn't matter what we say, it's not as good. We are, we are kept in the background. We've got to get away from that. They are just as good. In many cases they're bigger, in many cases they're more popular, in many cases they're more sensitive, and in many cases they're more deserving. It, it is not a fair world, I know, but if nobody shouts loud, uh, if we don't shout loud, nobody will. So I think resources should be allocated according to that, something a little more rational. Not a case of who was around in 1948 when Hall Paris was giving us a bit of thought, or who might come on shortly. Um, it, surely it's a, it's a more sensible world than that, that 60 years on, you, you rethink things, you have another look. And we've ended up in this position where, in effect, many of us are trying to do the same job wherever we are, but one, with one-tenth of the resources. <coughs> These are figures I hope you're all familiar with, but you get roughly a tenth, let's call it a tenth, of what the parks get. I'm trying to gripe about this, but the, the, the cake might well get bigger. I'd much rather the cake got bigger. But if it doesn't, you can't carry on with this iniquity. It's got to change. I don't know if that works very well. That's kept from the report I hope most of you have seen. The bits along the left you can't see, that's our budget. <laughs> <laughs> that's the South Downs. Apparently the South Downs is worth more than the rest of us put together. I'm, I'm going to bang on about this because it infuriates me. I'm sorry, <laughs> Paul's got... When I started 20 years ago, the only person I had to talk to was Paul Tiplady in the South Downs. So I knew a lot about them. There was a lot in common between us. Their budget was double ours, and I was envious about that. But anyway, it was double. It's now 20 times what we get in the Children's. What changed? I don't know. Whatever process government went through to decide recently that they are worth that amount of money, why is it not being applied to the rest of us? Because you wouldn't come out with the same pecking order, that's for sure. 6.7 million we get, that's what they get. Take the planning stuff out, they get, what is that, 120% more than the rest of us put together. That's a, that's, a, that's a hopeless investment strategy by government, isn't it? Put so much into one place and starve everything else when they're supposedly of equal value. In other words, you're letting half your houses fall down while you keep one Give gold, gold. Uh, anyway, right. <laughs> Moving on from there. I, this is a bit I want them all to see. And this is I want to roll here. I'm going to I'm going to get into the positive stuff. Because <laughs> you've got to finish on a high note, but you've got to get this off your chest. Because uh, there is an elephant in the room we skirt round every time, and it's about time we stopped. Said no, no, no more. Do you remember the week in April we all got a letter saying you might get another 1.9 percent cut? We'll let you know in September, October. Well, that came out. That's where your money's going. Now, 
I don't doubt the national parks or those five needed it. But, but what about everybody else? Where did that money come from? If, this has got to be more transparent than, than the, what we're finding. And I'm delighted Lord de Molly thinks these are precious natural environments, the jewels in the crown, worthy of investment, brilliant. But apply it everywhere all of the time. So um, I'm making a plea that uh, those who are in that position to take their view of how money is spent, <coughs> have another look. Have you got the right investment strategy? Are you getting the right rates of return, as it were? Right, there we are. Rethought or lost? The, the question has to be posed at some point. You need national parks. I don't, don't doubt that for a minute. There's a national brand. It's an international brand. It sets the bar as high as you can possibly set it. Uh, that's beyond question. But you've got to rethink this. Have we got the right national parks? How many people from national parks are here, by the way? You're here. <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 you two are here by invitation, presumably. But it's, 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 it's pathetic. Why? Well, you've not been invited. <laughs> but you get a free lunch and you're being entertained. <laughs> but, but that's part of the problem, isn't it? That's part of the problem. Why are they not here? As it, do they feel there's nothing to learn? Surely there's a lot to learn. David himself said, you know, lots of innovation and forward thinking and passion from AMVs. And there's a lot of us. It's free. So why are they not here to exchange that with us? Anyway, some tactics and all that. I'm going to be... How are we doing time, though? I'm going to be quick now. See, I was hoping the minister would waltz in and I could finish on a high note. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you know all that stuff. We've definitely got to sell ourselves better, but you've got to deliver. And I think that's what AMBs are fantastic about. You convert national policy to digging holes in the ground, as it were, in as short a chain as possible. That's what it's about. Do stuff. Special places, there we are. Uh, good design and, and change. Don't, don't be afraid of it. I, I, we are far too afraid of it. People <coughs> need places to live and work, and they need good services, and they need them in special landscapes. It's a question of how you do it. You need very good quality design, and that need not cost a lot more. Right, and the Philistines bit, that, that, those aren't just the developers, of course they want to build something uh, of high value for as little as possible and maximise their profit, that's how the world works. But the Philistines are all over, a lot of them are on development control committees, and I hope none of them are here. <laughs> Actually, I do hope you're here and you can read that. Um, it's about high standards, not saying no, it's making sure it's good. These are a thousand year decisions as it were, get them right. And uh, I put that at the bottom, it shouldn't have been at the bottom, this bit about rewilding, offsetting. In other words, it's, what, what are the new games in town? To a certain extent, it's, it's more, you know, the usual stuff, but those are the two big new things I think we've got to grapple with. Offsetting certainly has a place, lots of things you've got to get right, but it's a, it's a means of injecting investment and marrying development and, and good management. And rewilding. And there are places where we should just say, look, we're putting enormous amount of public money in here, the sod all benefit, why are we doing it? Close the door, come back 30 years and see what nature's done. I bet it's done rather a good job, actually. Tactics. Um, let, me, let me pick on that one. Um, see what money's out there, see what you can cultivate, but be very wary of, of everything you chase. And uh, I don't know if any of you are involved with Groundworks as an example, but I have been for a very long time. Got some of the blind alleys they've rushed around down to get a pot of gold. It's been truly depressing. Uh, and, and one of the reasons we don't talk about them so much anymore, you've got to be slightly wary about this, because most of this is about cultural values and priorities. It isn't necessarily about pound, shillings and pence. So be cautious about who you take the money from, and, and be aware you get return where you do put your very precious public money. And the public, so it is the public, this is their money. Don't forget that's the bottom slide. It, it, a, a politician reminded me that not long ago, he, he said, it doesn't matter all this highfalutin stuff we talk about in the House, uh, all these big grand policies and uh, acts of parliament, he said, and so on. He said, it's very salutary when you go and knock on Mrs. Miggins' door to say, please vote for me, and she'll say, what have you done for my street? You have to have an answer. What have you done for the people on her street? It, it goes down to that level. And I think we do that very well. Right, there you are. I'll tell you, I'll pick up the mood a bit. Enjoy it. <laughs> It sounds very profound, the top bit. I can't make any claims to have made it up. That's from David Attenborough, but I thought it was rather good. You, 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 if you don't value and appreciate something, you, you're certainly not going to care about it and do anything. And if it doesn't result in a doing bit, it's all wasted. So you've got to go out and do something. We're excellent. And I do, I keep this over my desk, just to remind ourselves, it's not life or death, by and large. 
Do, do read it. <laughs> Frank, it, it's, all, it's all spiritual. It's a kind of, you know, life is rather wonderful. So, uh, whatever maybe General Harrison did, don't do that. <laughs> And there we are, and I, I, I make a point of this, partly because I have a wonderful drive to work every morning. Um, the term recreation comes to recreate, to refresh, to, to lift your spirit. And I think we are so lucky, we can do that every day. And what we do every day for work, people go on holiday to do. That says it all, doesn't it? Thank you. Thank you.